Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkowiak, and uh, we are going to talk for a minute here about why I only shoot wide cut broadheads. Uh, I'm getting more and more fed up with the broadheads of today. We live in a world now where the standard seems to be this one and an eighth inch wide. Stupid. I mean, you look at all the broadhead companies out there that are making broadheads, and there's a lot of them. I mean, more so, there's three times as many companies making broadheads now as there was 10 years ago. Out of these broadheads that are out there, one and an eighth seems to be the standard for our traditional style broadheads. Okay, When I say traditional style broadhead, I am talking about, um, you know, glue-on style broadheads. That's these right here, where they are glue-on style um, you know, which is what I like, or you can get them in screw-in models as well too, but they are this style of a broadhead, okay, um, traditional, where you can re-sharpen them. These types of heads, uh, here's another style of it, but these are your, you know, these are traditional, uh, broadheads. That was one of your glue, and here's three more where they are, you know, same concept here. See, see what I'm talking about? Where are they going at? Where you can see them all here. Um, but these heads right here, okay, these are traditional bow hunting broadheads. The standard, the standard now is one and an eighth inch cut diameter, okay. Let's look at a one and an eighth inch cut, okay, one and an eighth inch cut. Now, I'm not knocking tough head broadheads. As you can see, I got a few of them here. Love tough head broadheads. They're amazing heads. They're fantastic. I cannot stand one and an eighth inch wide head. So, let's just look at one extreme to the other extreme, okay. So if we take a one and an eighth inch wide head, which we have right here as a tough head. You're not having an adapter I can set that on. I'll do it, show you what we'll do here. So here's a one and an eighth inch wide tough head, broad head, incredible head, never knocking a tough head, or this three to one ratio heads. I understand why they're there, never taking anything away from them, but those that are many of us that will not shoot this head, it is too narrow. Now look at on the extreme, this is more than one and a half. This is actually like one in, uh, more like one in uh, uh, seven sixteenths almost probably, or I mean one in uh, nine sixteenths is a little bigger, but I mean, one, look at the difference in size. That's basically a one and a half and it's basically a one and a quarter. And look at the cut diameter of that difference, okay? That's, that's incredible. There's a huge difference here. Okay, that's, that's a huge difference there. If I show them side by side, here's a true one and a half and a true one and an eighth by the same exact company. Okay, look at the difference. If I can hold them next to each other. Look at the difference in cutting diameter of that one and a half versus that one and an eighth. Okay, I mean, it's basically the same head, but look at the cutting diameter. I am... Fed up with one and an eighth inch wide heads. There's no, there, there's no real benefit to them. For me personally, I shoot wide broad heads. Always have for 30 years now. I'm actually coming up on 30 years of traditional bow hunting. Almost 200 big game animals that I've killed with a, with a longbow or recurve. And I've been on hundreds more blood trails with friends and family and stuff like that that have killed animals with, with traditional bows. Uh, the years are just catching up with me. You know, I'm 50 years old almost, and it's just getting that time where, you know, this experience has just gained and gained and gained in the knowledge and the stuff that I'm doing. And uh, so, I mean, I, I have a valid opinion on this. I'm only shooting wide cut broadheads. I've never shot a one and an eighth inch wide head. Some of you guys will say, well, how do you know a narrow one doesn't produce as good as a full as a bigger one? Because there's no possible way it can. Okay? We, we live in a world that is still defined by physics. And if we live in a world that is divine, defined by physics, we cannot break some of those rules. One rule is that this head here, that narrow head, will never give a big enough hole, a big as big as a hole as the wider head. Plain and simple. There is no denying that. Nobody can ever fault that. You cannot get a better blood trail with this one than you can with this one. You cannot get a bigger hole with this one than you can with this one. You can't. There's not the advantages. The wider wins. Okay, it's like when people try telling me too. Well, with my with my three twenty inch mini sticks, I can get just as high as you can with your three full size sticks. It is not physically possible to have three twenty inch inch sticks. And then compare them to three 32-inch sticks and tell me that you can get just as high with the 20. It's physics defines and rules and mathematics define laws. Okay, it's how it works, plain and simple. You cannot convince me otherwise. So for me, 
Panero head offers no advantages. There is zero disadvantages to a big head. So let's see here. What, what is it? Why, why do I shoot them? Blood trails. Okay. Blood trails are huge. How we find our animals 90% of the time is by blood. Okay. The three methods that matter to me for, blood, or for finding animals is blood trails, grid searches, and visually watching it go down. Those are the three methods to me that work. Blood trail, grid searches, or visually seeing that animal fall over. Preference is visually seeing it fall over. Okay, that's what I want. Okay, I want that more than anything. Now, there is an argument for smaller size heads, one and an eighth inch wide, your narrower three to one ratio heads. This is a three to one, and, and Tough Head does a good job on them, but you look at a three to one ratio head, it has skinny, long head, and people say, well, that arrow is going to blow through that animal very quickly, and that animal is going to have very shock factor to the trauma, you know, very little trauma. That arrow boom, boom, goes in and out, and that deer is still relaxed and calm, and he's not going to run away. So you're going to find him, again, visually, and that is very true. Now, we live in a time where a lot of people are shooting a lot of lightweight bows now. Okay, 45 pounds, 40 pounds, 38 pounds, uh, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. It lets you shoot a lot more. I'm not knocking anything here. This is just me, why I, I. Everything about this is I, okay? I'm not shooting a 40 pound bow. I'm shooting a 57 pound bow, okay? And that's the lightest bow that I've, I've ever shot in my life is 57 pounds. And I like them, they're very good. They work great for me. But it, I don't have any issues pushing a wide one and a half inch broadhead like this, I, I do not have any problems pushing this foom, foom, through deer. They go through deer and hogs, right through, foom, foom, in, out, done. Okay, no different than what this is going to do. So if the, the only difference for me in my shooting between this head and this head is that this one sticks in the ground six inches after it goes through, this one sticks in the ground two inches after it goes through. That's really the difference. With that being the case, there's no advantage to me to shooting a narrower broadhead because of you gain so much by shooting a bigger broadhead. There are a tremendous amount of us out here that are just like me that do not want to shoot a 40 pound bow and do not want to shoot a narrow broadhead. Okay, we don't want to do it. So for us, there's no benefit to a stupid one and an eighth inch standard. Not, not a stupid one and an eighth inch head, but a stupid one and an eighth inch standard. Why do I keep saying a standard? Because in a traditional world, now fortunately in double bevels, you still have the wikis. Okay, Magnus went out of business years ago. These are both Magnus, these are double bevels, but that's a Magnus one and a quarter and a Magnus one and a half, okay? Beautiful designs. Well, fortunately, still have Zwicky and Delta and Eclipse and companies that still make this style head. Incredible. Okay, these are awesome heads. Back when one and a quarter was standard, basically, this is a one and a half. They were fantastic heads, and there are still companies out there that make them. I prefer a single bevel head now. Single bevel heads, which are the reason I prefer them, not to get too off track, is a single bevel will give you this slight S cut. When you have this S cut, okay, goes through the hide, because it's spinning, they're single bevels, so when they hit, they spin. They create this slight little S shape in that animal like that. When that S cut that's in there, when that arrow hits, it goes, it gives that whoop, like that kind of a look in that hide. When you stretch that out, so that animal runs, and that hide is stretching, this, which is the width of the broadhead, when you stretch that out, it's actually longer Okay, than what it is because of that S cut being able to be stretched out. So it's got kind of that extra little bonus effect to it. Um, the holes are just bigger. Okay, they just seem bigger to me anyway. And uh, you see that cut. So for me, I like that aspect of that, that single bevel. I also believe that as they're twisting through organs in there, they're, they're, there's more rotational twist to grab that meat. So to, or vital organs, they're, they're actually... Like getting, it's not just going straight through where it's just going to go 
foomp and pass right through. It's actually going and grabbing and it's twisting and knotting. It's only going to do that much of a twist, but it grabs it and it's just going to cut it and again enforce that twist factor into it and create larger holes and wound cavities inside that animal. My opinion. Um, now, I've only killed 20 or so animals with single bevels over the last couple of years, so not like I'm an expert in, in single bevels, but I'm liking the results are tremendous. Okay, I'm very happy. 20 animals, and I'm watching them fall down right there. I'm seeing every single one of them go down. And I'm watching them go down. I'm watching gut shot animals that normally would take, you know, that I'd have to wait out for 12 or 14 hours. I'm, I'm finding they're, they're dead in like an hour. It's like, what is going on? I mean, the stuff I'm seeing is unbelievable. Then you get there, and it's uh, because a hole's so big, intestines and everything are actually coming out of that hole, and they're just, they can't go nowhere. They just, they're bedded down right there. They can't move. It's too big of a hole with too much coming out and they're just done right there. So it's, to me, the single bevel offers advantages. The standard problem. Standard is that in the single bevel world, one and an eighth is the standard. If, for, if there's for every, for, there's 25 companies, 30 companies out there making a single bevel broadhead like this and they're all making them at one and an eighth. There is only one company, one, one company that makes a one and a quarter, trying this upside down, that makes a one and a quarter or a one and a half. Oh, we gotta make that too. Okay, but there's only one company out there making one and a quarter and one and a half glue on single bevels. Only one company. One and that's A Boyer. And I have them right here, okay? That's it. We need more companies to produce these. This is important, okay? This, can, this, this cannot fly in a traditional world, okay? We, we want more of this. So if you're a broadhead company, great that you make these little baby one, one and an eighth inch cuts, or even worse, the little one inch cuts and your philosophy behind them. I'm not knocking that and I'll never take it away from you and you do whatever you want to do, but I'm telling you, we want one and a quarter and one and a half. We want them more than we want these. I promise you, if you make them, they will sell. This people don't want. I don't want. I want a broadhead that gives me better blood trails, that is going to work better on marginal hits. Okay, so that means that there's a better chance. If you look at this, this is actually two scale. One and an eighth and one and a half. They're two scale, but I bumped them up times three. I have my ruler right here to prove it, okay? So they're actually legit. I just made them three times bigger so you can see them. Look at the extra cut distance, the diameter of that cut that you get on that one and a half versus that one and an eighth. And these are proportionate. They're just blown up three times bigger, but look at the size difference. You don't think that's going to make a difference on nicking a liver or nicking arteries or, you know, any of that kind of stuff or catching the top of the lungs on a high hit or maybe catching, instead of it being a one lung hit, being two lungs? You don't think that's going to matter on marginal hits? You bumped your head. It matters tremendously. Science, physics, and math prove that. You cannot convince me otherwise. Okay, I don't care what you tell me about how great little one inch and one and an eighth inch wide heads are. You cannot argue this fact. Better blood trails, better on marginal hits, gut shots go down quicker because they are opened up more and the guts get twisted and knotted up in there. There's more damage to them and more cuts and lacerations in them. You cannot, there is zero disadvantage to a big head. With the exception, we two we will cover right now. Okay. One misconception on a big head is that they will not go through bone. Okay, so when we say bone, we're not talking about ribs. Ribs are easy for anything. You can shoot a meat cleaver through ribs, okay? Ribs are not a problem. Spine, okay? Well, you're not going to put them down on a spine shot. Well, honestly, they work just fine on a spine shot. The spine is right there under the skin. Okay, there's nothing stopping it. It doesn't matter if you're using a big broad head or a little broad head. Getting into that spine and severing those are going to work just fine. Okay, they work perfect. There's no difference in between these heads on spine shots. Shoulders are where we're talking about. Shoulder shots. People say, well, you can't get a big head through a shoulder blade. You're right. It's hard. It is very hard to push this broad head through a shoulder blade. All right? Now, maybe it's a little easier to push this head through a shoulder blade. Okay? But again, look at we're giving up on everything diameter-wise cutting diameter on there, but maybe it's easier to push this through a shoulder blade. We'll come back to that. But question here, 
is not everybody is shooting that three to one ratio head. What about this one? Okay. What about this? Here's a one and an eighth inch made by A Boyer, but this is a one and an eighth inch. And it's the same size basically as a one and a, as a one and a half inch. Do you honestly think that this is going to be much different than this to push it through a shoulder blade? Okay. Not really. This is what most of the broadheads out there in the one and an eighth look like. Okay. Very similar to this. Very similar to this. Or what if we were to meet in the middle? Oh my gosh. What if we made it in a one and a quarter? So here we go from one and an eighth. Try this with two hands and three heads. Let's see here if we can do this. So we got one and an eighth, one and a quarter, and one and a half. Right there. Okay. Do you think there's a big difference between this one and an eighth and this one and a quarter right here? You think there's going to be any difference in penetration? Probably not, but you gain a lot more cutting diameter in that one. And then when you go to this one and a half over here, you see the difference here. Okay, there's no reason for this to be standard. None at all. Now, when it comes to that shoulder blade, let's put something into reality here perspective-wise. Again, and I say this because, you know, you, you hear this. Well, I blew right through his shoulder. Yeah, you, maybe you did that once. Maybe you did that two out of ten times. You're not telling the rest of the world the reality of it, but let's put it into perspective. Traditional bow hunters are not shooting the energy capable of doing that on a regular basis. Even if we are, our arrows are going too slow to bypass body roll on deer. All right. So what I mean by if you're shooting elk, you probably have better chance getting through an elk shoulder than you do a white-tailed deer shoulder, because a white-tailed deer is going to roll. All right. He is narrow in profile. He is high off of the ground where his back is, and he doesn't have much weight to him. Okay. And he's going. You're going to shoot, and you're going to hit that shoulder. And when you hit that shoulder. That deer is going to roll. He is going to absorb the impact of that arrow by body movement, and he's probably jumping the string anyway. So if all these movement factors are happening and are going to really limit your penetration. So if you think, in, unless you are shooting 65, 70 pound bows with your one inch, super little narrow, you know, three to one ratio heads like this, and uh, unless you're in that scenario, your odds of putting putting that arrow through a shoulder blade on a consistent basis, notice I said consistent basis, are very, very low. Don't kid yourself. I don't care what you saw on the internet, what you saw in the movies, what you saw in testing on a shoulder blade stuck against a target on a, or a plywood board that could never move and absorb anything. I don't care what you've seen. We're talking real world here. Do not think for a second that that shoulder blade is unstoppable for your arrow. It can stop it any time it wants to. So with that being said, okay, even a, even a little doe can, or a little yearling can stop it because again, that body roll is so tremendous from them on that impact hit and our arrows are moving slow and hitting hard and there's a good possibility. Don't kid yourself to thinking that you're blowing through that shoulder blade with a uh, narrow head on a regular basis. And I don't care what anybody tells you. My opinion, take it for what it's worth. Again, I'm getting up there in years as far as doing this. Uh, I'm shooting a lot of animals doing this. I mean, so my experience level is speaking to itself for me. Whether you take it or you don't, I, I don't care. But again, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of animals now that I've been part of either killing or been on blood trails with and tried to recover. Hundreds of them shot by traditional bows in all different arrow combinations. So... Take it for what it's worth, whatever you want. My opinion, I will never ever shoot at a shoulder on purpose on a white-tailed deer. No offense if you've done it, but I'm sorry, but I think it's a piss poor shot and a bad idea. And I don't think it's a good thing to do. And I, I, I can't pat you on the back and say, good job, you did well. No, you took a shot, quartering on, on an animal, thinking you can get through there because you shoot a little broadhead. And it's all lies and myth and not true. Well, maybe you did it. But I promise you the times are coming where you're not going to be able to. It is not an ethical shot in my opinion. My opinion, my video, my set. So, for me, the matter of penetrating a shoulder blade, irrelevant. Doesn't matter. Because neither one of them are, going to, are guaranteed to do it all the time, so you're much better. Avoid the shoulder blade, forget about it, shoot it the other way. Um, do mine go through shoulder blades? Yes, they do. Okay. Um, single bevels go through them better. 
Now I've hit two deer in the shoulder blades since shooting single bevels, um, and then actually, well, four if you count opposite shoulders going out. With my double bevel Magnus head, with these, this black one, I've not really gone through the shoulder very well with these. Okay, they'll, they'll sink in there pretty good, but they don't go through that shoulder blade. The single bevel, in the same size, does get through that shoulder blade better. That single bevel rotation. Um, and I also see it mainly in the, op in the exits. So when I shoot quartering away and I come in behind the shoulder and I hit that off shoulder, breaking that off shoulder leg, these, these heads are twisting and snapping and breaking things and doing fantastic jobs. I'm very impressed with them. But it is not a guarantee. That you will get through there so i'm going to call it basically in my my mind a wash could it maybe help you a little bit with a narrower head and possibly uh get through there more so let's say you're going to get through a shoulder blade five out of ten times with this maybe six okay and i'm only going to get through that shoulder blade three out of ten times with this maybe four okay that may be an advantage to you but I, in doing this, I'm giving up this, I'm giving up this, I'm giving up this with this. Again, not, not, I'm not knocking tough heads. I'm saying this stupid little one and an eighth. Now, if that is your choice and you want to shoot it, more power to you. Shoot it. Nothing wrong with that. There are a tremendous amount of us that want a one and a quarter or one and a half inch wide head. Okay, This one and an eighth, we don't care about. Okay, and you can tell me till you're blue in the face it's better, and the animals don't run, and this and that, but I'm telling you from my personal experience, which is hundreds and hundreds of animals, the one and a quarter is a happy medium. The one and a half is the ultimate. In my opinion, a one and a quarter standard even, it gives you all the benefits of this plus so much more benefit. Why is this the standard? Why? It makes no sense. So in my opinion, I shoot wide heads. One and a quarter at minimum, one and a half preferred, one and an eighth, never. Not doing it. Won't shoot it. One and a quarter, one and a half. If you are a broadhead company, start making one and a quarter and one and a half. Fortunately, there are a couple companies that are, that, well, one that I know of for sure, I've been shooting a prototype down in Georgia this year, and it's working great. I'm excited for them to come out. A. Boyer, the only company out there that makes a one and a quarter and a one and a half glue on broadhead. Out of 60, 50, 30, whatever broadhead companies out of there are out there, a, one company builds a one and a quarter and a one and a half glue on that's in a single bevel. One company. Let that sink in. How stupid that is. You know, how far down the hole we have gone. We need to correct that. We need to fix that. I will only shoot wide broadheads. I hope you feel, if you feel the same way, call these broadhead companies. Tell them how you feel. Tell them you want a one and a quarter or one and a half, that you're sick and tired of one and an eighth standard. The one and an eighth is overrated. And I'm not taking anything away from it. People want to shoot them, more power to them, shoot them. I am not shooting them for these reasons. This has been proven to me over hundreds of animals. Why would I ever say, okay, I'm going down? No, I don't need to. One and a quarter, one and an eighth, that's it right there. I, I don't care what it is. I don't care if I'm going after a, a T-Rex, Rhinoceraptor, Velasa, you know, uh, Rhino animal or whatever the biggest thing is in the world. I'm still not shooting a one and an eighth. Not going to happen. I want all of these factors here to benefit me. So that's why I only shoot these. And I have no interest in going any narrower. And I wish broadhead companies would start paying attention to the fact that there's a tremendous amount of us out there that don't want to shoot a 40-pound bow, and we want a bigger broadhead, and we want all the advantages that come with it. Start making them. Somebody. So, and if you feel the same way, call these broadhead companies and tell them how you feel. Tell them this is what, you know, you're thinking. That you're sick and tired of a one and an A standard. Make a one and a quarter at the very minimum or a one and a half. They're easy to tune. They fly fantastic. They hit like a ton of bricks. They have all the benefits that you're, you're missing, you know, that you don't get. And I get so many people now, too, that tell me on here, you know, that you see they're shooting these heads. I see them every year on social media. Oh, I shot a deer and I lost it. Oh, blood petered out after a little while. Oh, I didn't have any blood. Oh, I gut shot it and got away from me. Okay, if you're using one of these little one and a and one and a eighth inch wide heads, I can understand every one of those things happening. 
Okay, but when you put one of these through an animal, one and a half inch wide, even at one and a quarter, okay, the blood trails open up. Everything comes out. The, the marginal hits become better. The gut shots, I've never, I haven't lost a gut shot with a wide head ever. I mean, you, you hit them and they're done. I, I've killed three pigs this year, and with pig vitals being so far forward, I've actually, I've killed four pigs so far this year, but three of the pigs this year had basically had gut shots. They were gut shot. They didn't make it farther than 30 yards on gut shots. We're right there. Why? Because that those zeros work so good. Then you get there, you got this entrance hole, you got this exit hole, and you got all this stuff. You got three pounds of crap hanging out of that exit hole. It's kind of hard for them to get up and run around with that. Okay? That's because of this. And because of this. How that comes together. Okay? Huge advantage. And I've had deer the same way this year, too, and last year, too. First one I ever killed with a single bevel, um, I put it in a video. It's one of those videos that's out there, and uh, you can see it. There's a three-gallon bucket worth of stuff hanging out of there, okay? And that was basically a, uh, a quartering away shot where the entrance hole went in, you know, would be a gut shot, exit into the shoulder on the other side. But you should see that entrance side, okay? There's three pounds of stuff hanging out of it. It's impressive. So for me... Wide heads only, period. If you feel the same, call these broadhead companies. Let them know what you want. Thanks for watching.